I'm out here today with my little two series John Deere and a six foot bush hog to cut 49 acres. And that's probably not an ideal pairing, but the situation kind of dictates it. The person needs this bush hog as soon as possible. Didn't get any responses from anyone with a larger piece of equipment. I told him I can do it, I just don't know how long it'll take. I'm gonna use this job to find out how many acres I can bush hog in an hour when it's just weeds and grass. Most of the jobs I've taken were cutting thick stuff that I could barely even manage with the bush hog. This has previously always been mowed. It just got away from them a little bit. So it'll be a good measuring stick. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna break down kind of the profitability of this type of bush hogging, what I think is a good rate to charge, how long does it take, and hopefully that's helpful to you guys. So I had a few mechanical breakdowns, I had some unexpected problems, and really quite a few things I'd like to share, but let's start off by just listening to the brush hog work a little bit. Well, I've only mowed a little bit and I'm already running into a couple problems that I should have factored in. So we're going to put the tractor in the barn here on their property. They said it was fine if we leave it here. And I'm going to go, I'm going to get some goggles because the dust is absolutely blinding my eyes. Um, I might bring back the rear glass for the tractor and possibly even the doors. So I'm going to see if I can make that dust a little bit more manageable. So I'll be right back. All right, well, I got out here and I got started on the brush hogging yesterday and the combination of the heat and the dust made it really difficult. I only had a couple hours anyway yesterday, but I had to knock it off early. I think I might cut a little better if I drop my rear wheel so the back of the bush hog's just a little bit higher. It's really hilly and at some points I'm almost bottoming it out and I just think it might run a little better that way. Seems like Ben from K&H Tractors told me one time that I needed to drop my rear wheel. So we'll give that a try. I'm also going to let it down on the ground and make sure that it's level side to side. Again, on the hills and the, the dips and stuff, it's hard to tell, but I think I may be sloped a little bit this way. There's three holes farther forward and then four further back. So it looks like there's seven settings. It was on the fourth 
mark and I just moved it down one bolt hole. So we'll see if that does any better. Let me let the brush hog down and check it for level side to side. I'm going to show you just a hazard of this kind of work. Sometimes things happen and you deal with it and you go on. Somewhere out where I was working, there was some kind of an old rake or, you know, like a four prong garden hoe. And I ran over it and I've got fluid leaking out of the tire, starting to get a little bit low. Luckily, there's a service center around here that's sending a technician out here to fix it in place. So, I should be back up and going pretty quick, but I'm losing the best weather of the day to work in. Let me see what time it is. It's nine o'clock, so I had about an hour left before it starts to get hot. So we'll get this fixed up. If the technician is agreeable to that, I'm gonna record him making the repair, which might be helpful to some people. I ended up making a complete separate video just on this tire repair. It was pretty cool the way he fixed it on location and how quick he got done, but I'll put a link to that towards the end of the video if you're interested in seeing it. Damn. Yeah. What you're seeing here is the end of day two of what ended up being a four-day project. Really could have been done in two days, except I had a couple problems like you've already seen. And I tried to avoid mowing right in the heat of the day, although on the final day, I ended up mowing right through the heat. At the end of the video, I give my new pricing model on per acre and per hour for this type of job. And the things that are always hard to factor in and that you can't anticipate is just like how bumpy the ground is. If the ground's rough, you have to drive slow and there's no getting around that. Then there's unexpected obstacles. I underestimated how much it would slow me down going under all the trees on this property. Things like that are just hard to predict.
All right, well, I actually made it out here on time today. The official sunrise is 628, and it's like 619, so I'm going to actually get the bush hog on the ground before sunrise. The only thing I've got left to do is I'm going to sharpen the bush hog blades. I've heard people say you don't even need to sharpen them. I've never sharpened mine, and I've used the heck out of it. But I think just touching them up a little bit will help it cut this grass better. The other thing I did today that I've never done before is refuel during the middle of a job. Because I burn about a gallon an hour. On some types of work, it's less than a gallon an hour. And so I've never done a job that used an entire tank of gas, but I did yesterday. I got seven hours of mowing in, used up this whole seven gallon tank. So we're fueled up. It's nice and cool out here. I should be able to really lay into what's left of this property. I'm guessing after seven hours yesterday, I've probably done 30 to 40% of the job, but it's really hard to measure that. job I've ever done I've had the most hiccups ever with this one I mean part of that's just because it was time-consuming so there's more opportunity for things to go wrong but um, I broke a shear bolt coming off the gearbox no big deal probably actually cracked it doing a different job because I haven't hit much doing this you know occasionally a rock or something but nothing really big or killing the tractor kind of jam up but I didn't have one with me, so that cost me a bunch of time. I had to go get go get some shear bolts. Hopefully this will go on pretty easy and I can get back to it. Okay, right there is the shear bolt. The nut goes on the back side. So I guess the fact that this is the first shear bolt I've broke is just a testament to the quality of the slip clutches. Well, you saw me there blowing off all the dust and grass off the tractor, and that was a big problem that I just never had before. Um, I don't know what the difference was about this grass, but it very quickly was building up on the grill guard, and that keeps air from getting into the radiator, keeps the tractor getting hotter as you go. So I would stop at least once an hour and blow all that dust off. Now, I also was talking to someone who caught a brush hog on fire because the gearbox can get hot and the top of the brush hog can get hot and it's got dead grass sitting on it as you go. And I noticed you've got that same dead grass piling up around the PTO shaft and on the backhoe subframe on the back of the tractor. And I imagine that's getting pretty hot too. So I always blew off the brush hog the front grill, the radiator, and the actual back of the tractor every time I stopped. And of course I was also blowing all the dust off my face and my arms and everything else. So the fact that I had to stop and do that all the time really slowed me down a lot.
for the whole project, I'm going to have about 21 hours to do 49 acres. So that's about two and a half acres per hour. If it was like the grass on my property, which is a hay field, and after the last cut, I'll mow it one more time, I can probably do four acres an hour. But this is heavy, thick stuff that slows me down. I can only do two and a half acres an hour. So in my case, if I want to make $75 an hour, and it's two and a half acres per hour, then I can charge $30 per acre. Now that I know that number, $30 per acre, 49 acres would be $1,475 is what it would cost for me to mow this. Now it's probably not practical for the landowner to spend that much on brush hogging. They could probably get someone with a bigger tractor and a 15 foot mower that could do this really quick for half that price. And I only charged them half that price because I didn't know how long it would take and I'm trying to help somebody out. I find myself a lot of times just thinking more about the other person than I am myself as far as pricing because I'm not trying to earn a living from this. But the more jobs I take, the more I realize I'm going to have to charge that full price, which would have meant turning this job down. So I originally tried to turn this down, and I told the landowner, you know, if you can find someone else with a bigger brush hog, then go ahead and have them do it because it's going to cost me too much time. I'm going to have to overcharge you. He couldn't find anyone else. They have to have this done by Saturday. They've got their reasons that this has to be done. And so finally, I said, I'm going to help somebody out. And I gave them that price that's about half of what it should have been. And I'm fine with it because this isn't how I earn my living. But it puts a lot of stress on the tractor doing this all the time. So I think $75 an hour is a pretty good number. And... I hope that it's helpful for you to see what a tractor this size with a six foot bush hog can mow in an hour. Anyway, I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. Just a minute, you'll see links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.